Millions of Americans experience depression. Some can manage it effectively, others are crippled by it. Dr. Arun Sharma, let's talk today about depression. What causes it? What does it look like? Depression, as you said, uh, is uh, a condition that affects many people and the experience itself can be disabling. And uh, one in 10 people in the U.S. Uh, are having current depression that is going to affect their day-to-day -day life. Uh, it not only affects their day-to-day -day life, but if they have other conditions with it, any medical condition like diabetes, hypertension, arthritis, cancer, or uh, heart disease, it is going to affect that as well. Uh, so depression is a condition in which it is uh, somewhat complex. It has a medical basis, but there are psychological and social factors that also affect. And that's why the treatment has to be geared towards not only just medically, but also psychosocially. And it looks different in different people. That is correct. Now depression presents uh, in all ages very differently. Now the kids will present more as behavioral symptoms. You might see that uh, they are not interested in uh, seeing their friends or there may be change in music or the dress up they do. Uh, their grades may be affected. Their general behavior even at home may be affected, maybe more oppositional than usual. And the adults may present more with uh, psychological symptoms. Uh, their ability to say that I am down, I'm sad, or more emotional symptoms. And whereas the elderly presents more with physical symptoms, uh, uh, mainly focusing on uh, gastrointestinal symptoms like stomach problems, backache, and others. So depression is a, a condition that can happen at any age, but it presents very differently. So how do we know the difference between a sad time in our life, a, a, a crisis in our life, versus clinical depression? Uh, that's a great question. The, uh, the difference between the normal sadness uh, that uh, we may, time to time, all of us may have, uh, the depression lasts longer, is much more intense. If the sadness and depression continues to go on for weeks after week, and the second part is if it affects your day-to-day -day functioning. A normal sadness, and when we are blue, it does not affect our functioning to the point that we could still do our work, we could still eat and sleep, uh, we may have a day or two like that, but in depression as an illness, it goes on for weeks, months, and in some cases even years. How was this diagnosed? Uh, the diagnosis is by a trained professional, a psychiatrist, psychologist, or a therapist, or a mental health professional by a clinical interview. Now, we do not have a blood test or x-rays that we can take and say, here is the diagnosis of depression. It is a clinical interview in which examination is conducted, which is a set of questions are asked and a history is obtained. And both the personal history and the family history, so it takes about an hour, hour and a half on the first time. And there are certain uh, um, scales we can use which can actually uh, confirm the diagnosis. These scales are like PHQ-9. There are several other scales like Hamilton, Hamilton uh, depression rating scales that we can rate and kind of monitor. So there are uh, uh, clear uh, scientific ways that we can actually diagnose and uh, help the treatment. What are some of the myths surrounding depression? Uh, there are several myths. So one of the myths is the person who has this depression uh, begins to think that it may be you know, something that I'm crazy or it's my fault or it's a weakness. That's the number one myth out there is, uh, and as a result, uh, a person continues to kind of muddle along uh, and not uh, mention it to anyone. And that is the second myth, that we don't share. Um, that how bad, if I'm having a tummy ache or chest pain, I mean, we let the world know about it. But in depression, we keep it to ourselves. The other myth is that if we talk about it, it's gonna get worse. It is just the opposite. If we talk about this, that this is what I have, this is how I feel, and you uh, are sharing with your loved ones or anyone that you trust, uh, and in fact, it is going to actually get better, not get worse. The third is, uh, yeah, it's not only a personal weakness that uh, uh, not only that people will call me crazy, it's a weakness uh, that uh, it's going to go away by itself. That if I just um, pull myself together, take a shower, go for a walk, I mean, that by itself is not going to help. Now, if a simple blue or sadness or something event happened, those are great things to do. But without treatment, depression is not going to get better. 
So now when we visit our uh, family physician, there's a checklist. Did your mother or father have heart disease? Did your mother or father have cancer? And the list goes on. Right. Depression is on there. There is a genetic link. Right. Yes, you know, just like most medical illnesses, uh, there is a genetic uh, linkage to we are all predisposed or uh, are born with some vulnerability or the other, you know, some disease or the other, whether it's a heart disease, it's a, a diabetes or cancer, and mental health issues are no different. Now, to put it simply that it is a genetic disease is also um, uh, not accurate entirely. There are uh, other psychological social factors that affect depression. So the way we see it is, yes, there is a biological basis, which means genetic. So that's why heritability of depression is important. But then how we cope with things. What are my psychological mechanisms to cope with things? So that's why the psychotherapy becomes a very important part of treatment of depression. And then my social circumstances. Now, what circumstances I'm in also would influence these conditions. So as a result, so biological uh, issues such as genetics, and which is again tied down to our neurochemistry, but the psych uh, how we cope with things with the psychological aspects and the social factors, the circumstances, they all contribute uh, to having a disease. Now we believe that most of the mental health uh, uh, illnesses have that kind of a basis. And in my opinion, even a lot of the medical illnesses have such basis. You know, even in diabetes, if you can treat it by insulin, but to really have a, a, a long-term uh, management, you need to address psychological and social issues. Treatment options. What's out there? Because I, I would think if you're sitting at home going, I feel like something's not right, but I don't want to go down a path of a lifetime of medicine or a lifetime of sitting across the table talking with someone. There are many things out there now to treat this effectively. The although depression can be disabling, the good thing is treatments are available. 80 to 90 percent of people actually do get better. The, one of the other myths is that depression is lifelong, that I will have to take this medication or counseling or therapy for life, uh, lifelong, and that is not true. Most people get better if they seek help early within six to nine months, either with medications or psychotherapy or some change uh, in their social environment with the help of the uh, treatment that a person can uh, reach. So the other thing is the treatment is obviously uh, 60 to 70 percent of the treatment is medication, but psychotherapy or psychosocial interventions, they are very effective and they don't have to go on for life. Uh, usually 20 to 24 weeks of treatment with psychotherapy and counseling can help. Medication treatment, six to nine. Most people get benefit, or what the way we treat it in our Legion Creighton system is with both approaches, medications and psychotherapy. So what do you tell someone who may be looking at your interview right now and thinking uh, there's something that's just not right? Where do they start to get that help? Uh, the one thing I would say is let's con confront all the myths and let's uh, get to talk to some professional. And the help is available. These medications, these psychotherapy are, as I said, is not lifelong. None of these medications are um, also not lifelong. They are not addictive, they're not habit forming, and, and the condition is treatable. So you can get back to uh, your normal uh, way of functioning uh, at work or at home uh, and have some fun in life. You get your life back. Yes. Dr. Sharma, thank you very much. Yes.